this government will be so radically changed and justice will be given like it's supposed to be given. And now I'm going to go back to Kavanaugh for a few minutes. When, when I was watching that, where they actually gave the vote, remember? He won by two votes. That was probably by two Democrats that changed their mind. Some, some of them did actually vote for him. When they were confronted, I think it was that one senator that stood up and said that he was ashamed of all of them. He said, they're lying, and you know you are lying. But trying to prove Kavanaugh to be a, a victim, not a victim, to be um, a perpetrator. He said, when you say that he is wrong, he's committed a crime, you're lying, and you know that person was paid. And she was paid. Now, Kavanaugh has been innocent his whole life, a strong believer, a loving family man, even in high school and college, so many people who knew him came up. They didn't put him on the witness stand, but they told the news reporters anyway. You never probably saw that in the news. They had so many more people standing with him than against him. But they were desperate because nothing else was working. So they chose lying and deceiving, which is wrong. And I'm talking about, this is about our justice system. This is about telling the truth. This whole thing was about telling the truth. Is that right? Yes. It wasn't just a position. It was about the Supreme Court. Right. Where they're supposed to, you know, make sure truth is being done. And justice is being given. While well, they weren't giving him justice. And the Father was telling me in heaven, he will win that seat. And I will make sure he wins that seat. I don't care what they try, what they say. He is absolutely innocent. And he himself will have justice in that moment. And he said, and when he wins the seat, he has won a seat for heaven on the Supreme Court. Because he's a believer and he said yes to God. When you say yes to God, you give him permission to operate in you, in your household, in your business. And so when I was watching all this going on, God said, when they said, you know, he had won, God said, this moment, I am sending three special ops angels to be with him the whole time he's on the earth. The whole time he's in the Supreme Court, which will be a long, long time. He said, these angels will keep him from all harm. And no one who comes against him will succeed. And he said, these angels are some of the ones, the host, the army, who fought for Israel in the flesh. That's why they're special ops, special operatives. That's how important this is to God. He said, when he won, he won me a seat. God said, he won me a seat in the Supreme Court. He is serious about justice. And at the moment that they said that he had won, you know, uh, it was 50 to 48. And he said, when they said he had won, I heard millions of little babies in heaven celebrating. And I heard them shouting, now in America, freedom will come to all the little babies. And what was allowed for us to die will be struck down. And the future is going to be great for all the little babies being born in America. Amen. Amen. If you think heaven wasn't involved in that, they were very involved. Even the ones living there were involved. But especially the little babies, the ones that were aborted that live in heaven, they were shouting and celebrating. They knew what was going on in the earth. They knew how important that he won that seat because they will overturn Roe versus Wade. Amen. Heaven is very excited about this time. 
If you have family members living there, they are all cheering right now. Because heaven is shifting our government so they can then shape the future of this nation. And people will come to this country to find God. Amen? So this is definitely a time for freedom. And everyone will benefit from it. Even the ones who didn't want it. And you can get so far into deception, you don't realize, you don't realize because of the heat of the moment and being used by the enemy, you cannot even, um, you can't even, I'm trying to think, I don't, I'm not very good with, with human words, yeah. You can't comprehend what you're saying yes to, how that would affect your future. And they're not realizing that they were damaging the future of their generations coming on the earth. And then I will just talk about the agenda because I will, and God wants me to. The agenda of this Democratic Party now, not even before, but now, has, has really regressed into darkness so much because they filled themselves with hate and judgment and lies that were given, and even the fake news are getting physical, I mean mental therapy, mental help. Because they've messed up their own soul. As you think it in your soul or your heart, that is what you will become. So what they spewed out all the time, that's why they can't let it go. They have become the very thing that they gave out to everybody. They ate it themselves. Every time they said it and went in their soul. And they don't know how to be healed. They don't know how to be made whole. Families were separated. I know people, their family members will not talk to them if they voted for Trump. They've written them off their list like they never existed because their souls were filled with darkness. I know Trump wasn't perfect. God knows he wasn't perfect. But if we dug far enough back in almost everybody's past, we should took every, every one of the media, let's go back in their past 30 years and see what they were doing. How about all those senators? How about all those Democrats that were voting against Kavanaugh? Why don't we go back in their life and see what they did way back when? But when we give our lives to God, and whether you know it or not, Trump has given his heart to Jesus Christ. He's given his heart to Jesus Christ. I know a lot of leaders who he calls in all the time to counsel. He stands in the counsel of the godly, yes. which is another reason why the liberals don't like him. Because they don't want godliness. They don't want righteousness. They thought it was bad enough that Trump won and they didn't like him, but they realized he was giving God a place in the White House and welcoming God in our country. They really got terrified. They're thinking, it's all over if he stays in there. We'll lose everything we've gained over the last 20, 30 years. We'll lose it all. We need to do something to stop this. But they can't. They can't. And every time they try to do something, they, this is from heaven, they will lose. They'll lose in the elections. They'll lose in areas of business. They'll lose in areas of the government. Because this is God's divine time. And when he said, right before the election, I'm turning that map red. Whether anyone likes it or not, I'm putting my hand on America. I'm going to move across it. When they wake up in the morning, they will find out that map is red. Was it red? Well, get ready for the midterm elections. Amen. It's going to turn red again. Because this is his plan. And it goes from the top down. And our president is saying yes to freedom, yes to liberty, yes to prospering, yes to protecting our country, yes to a sound military, yes to the rights of the believers being restored. Right? Overturn the Johnson Amendment. Yes. 
that said they couldn't speak from their pulpit about about the about you know about voting and stuff. They couldn't have a political platform at all, which wasn't fair because every other group could do it. It didn't matter what they were. They could be Satanists and they'd still let them have a political platform. It didn't matter what kind of platform they had, but, they, but not Christians. Because we are a threat to the darkness. Amen. So God is moving uh, powerfully on our country. So when Kavanaugh won, that was a great victory for justice for generations. So you should be really excited and celebrate every day of your life that God chose this time. And he said, I'm starting with America because I know who's going to win. I know what their whole plan is. I know the body of Christ have been praying and praying for years that he would come and heal our land. And all those prayers were collected in bowls. And they were tipped. Amen. They were tipped. So everyone who prayed that prayer in Chronicles for generations in the past are a part of our victory today. Amen. Because he is healing our land. And things are going to get better, not worse. Amen. So vote Republican on November the 6th. Make sure you go vote. There'll be angels in every voting booth. <laughs> People like you are just wild. Yes, I am. I'm acting just like heaven. Because guess what? They have seen the future. They know the future. When your loved one goes home, God shows them the future. They know what you're going to be doing. You're, 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 you know, the generations after you will be doing. He knows it all. He's been from the end to the beginning, the beginning to the end. And he knows all of it. And he knows who he chooses is going to be what he wants him to be. Amen? Amen. So I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? Okay, see, I don't, that's too small. <laughs> So that's what he wanted to talk about tonight. He had me wear my, my patriotic. And before, when they allow the burning of our flag, that flag will fly high everywhere. And that image is being put on every kind of product possible. You'll see a lot more red, white, and blue. I saw whole businesses painting their businesses red, white, and blue. I did. Everywhere I went, you know, I've been places before, the red, white, and blue buildings, clothing with it on it, even some cars were painted red, white, and blue. And I promise you, you watch and see how many, be, how many automobile, uh, I don't even know what to call them, the manufacturers, thank you, Holy Spirit, begin to send those cars and trucks out painted red, white, and blue. It's going to happen more and more and more, and our, our flag will be honored because it represents Christ. Amen? Amen? It represents Christ, and America belongs to God. America is a Christian nation. Yeah. So I'm always happy to talk about America that is beautiful because God is here. Amen. And along with that and the body of Christ beginning to manifest in amazing, stunning, shocking, yep. miraculous things. Yeah. That, that is one of the reasons why God waited for the internet to do this. Because no one can stop those signs and wonders being seen all over the world. Amen. Amen. I think a lot of people in this country are very tired of doom and gloom predictions. This is not the time for God to use weather as judgment. It's not. This is the day of his power, not the day of his wrath. 
Those things are recorded in the very end of the Bible. Don't jump ahead, okay? So Jesus has given us keys. He's given us power and authority. He's given us declarations. He's given as an example how he lived his life. We are joint heirs with him. I was in law for eight years. I totally understand what being a joint heir is. You have the rights, whatever he had, we have. Whatever he did, we can do. That's what that means, you're a joint heir. The last testament is the last will and testament of Jesus Christ, just like in law. He gave us us rights in that will, amen? And when he died and was risen again, he even gave us power over death. So you don't have to die from sickness and disease. Even as your soul prospers, you will prosper and be in health. It is so powerful to understand what the word means and how to apply it to your life. That is getting training. Every missionary should know about commanding the host of heaven and sending them against all the darkness that's in the countries that they're, mission they're being missionaries in. Anyone who works against human trafficking should know about using the host. That is heaven's army that was not created to defend heaven. They didn't even get to fight when Lucifer fell. Not one angel fought against any of those one third of the angels. God kicked him out on a lightning bolt. He made heaven. It is his home. He is in charge of heaven. So why did he make the host? Why did he make them? There's a scroll in heaven that has been opened recently that talks about the destiny of the host, that they cannot complete their own destiny without us. They cannot on their own decide to go attack hell. It would have been wiped out already. They can't just get together and say, okay, let's see, uh, today we're gonna go to this country and wipe out all this. We're gonna, then we're going to go to this one and we're going to do all this. They have to have orders. Now, I know they have positions. They have inspectors. They have uh, people who command certain parts of the army. They have positions like inspector, troop transport. Um, they have a scouts who go behind the enemy lines and film all the activities of hell. Goes back to headquarters, heaven. They have all of these positions. That's why we have those positions in our army. Even in our own army, those troops on their own, the privates can't get together and try to drag weapons off somewhere and attack something. They can't do that. They have to have orders as the military to operate. And so does heaven's military. But we were created to be commanders. There's many scriptures in the Bible that talks about commanding. Even God said, command ye me. Didn't he? He was not saying, tell me what to do. He was saying, you command what will be done. If you already know God, you know what his desire is for something. You already know it. You're living righteous, correct? Then you can call the army to come and fight on your behalf. And not just fight on your behalf, but command it. Or God wouldn't say command. Jesus was also the Lord of host. He was over the army. What he did, we can do. I'm not here to tell you all those scriptures. I'm just telling you, you need to command the army of heaven. But the first thing you have to do is you have to realize that you were given power. Say the host of heaven. We're not given power over all the power of the enemy. Say the angels are under us. Not over us. Do you understand that? We came from inside God himself. We are his offspring. He spoke and the angels were made. They were sent to protect us and keep us in all of our ways. Now, some people knew that and they operated in that. That's happened with people before. But in this time, he wants the body of Christ to realize, stop fighting his plans. The enemy wants you to fight God's plans because then you won't become what he wants you to become. 
which is dangerous. It doesn't matter what your age is, your position is, how much money you have. It doesn't matter. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, then wash clean of all your sins. You're kind of righteous. You have entrance into heaven, into all of eternity. Why wouldn't you be able to come in? Say, we are kings, we are kings. And, priest and priests unto our God. Our God. Those, are Those are spiritual levels of authority. Of authority. Say, every king, every king commands, an army commands an army in the earth. In the earth. As, the body of Christ, As the body of Christ, we are in a kingdom, in a, kingdom. a spiritual kingdom. We have spiritual weapons. We get to use them to pull down strongholds of darkness. So wherever darkness is and evil is operating, we can do something about it. Amen. In this time of living, yeah, the Holy Spirit would always yell at me, don't try it. You do it. Don't just try it. If we're supposed to live in a way that nothing by any means will harm us, and people can quote that scripture all day long, and yet harm comes to you. Doesn't it? We're attacked by the enemy, aren't we? Yeah. Well, the army was designed and created to stop those attacks. To keep you in all your ways. Amen? Because when we are free of fear of being attacked, we can bushwhack the enemy. Because he certainly is not expecting it. So he doesn't like this meeting. He doesn't like these words. He doesn't like me at all. That's okay. I don't like him either. He's on the bottom of my list. Actually, he's under my feet. He is our doormat. The Bible even says so. So if we're not under, but we are over, because we rule and reign with Christ. And the Bible says, in this life, not talking about, you know, later on we will too. Not, that will, not in, the, in the next life, not your life, but in the next time, when there is no time. When time is no more, that's the end. Not the end of everything. It's the end of time. When time, when you don't have to have calendars and your body's not going to age and you have to be concerned about, am I going to have this or do that? When that time of timeless comes, when we're timeless, I'm asking for that right now. What you ask, what you believe in your heart, do not doubt. You should have whatsoever you say. I'm saying I'm timeless. He is reversing back to my youth the people in heaven are timeless no one is old if your grandmother or great-grandmother moved to heaven at 99 she is not coming back when they step out of this body they're 99 they step out the wrinkled right wrinkled hard of hearing their sight, eyesight's going they probably don't feel very good. They can't run and jump. And they step out of that body and look like they're 25. Do you think they're going back? <laughs> they aren't. They'll pray for you and declare over you and make plans for you in heaven. But they are not coming back. They won't be happy. In the day when we are timeless, there will be no war, no evil, no sickness, no disease, no lack, no threats, no rejection of any kind. And we will live like that through eternity. But we can still create. We can invent. We can speak to things and they will appear. You can write on light. You can write on music. Be transported through light, through time. You have planets to visit for vacation. The new heaven will be your home. 
but you go on vacation to other planets. He says there will be a new earth, new heaven, say it, and a new earth. That earth will not just be God's home. In my father's house, this is Jesus speaking, in his house, that's the world. In this world, this home, that's called heaven, are many mansions. That's what's going on now. But at the end of time, when he makes a new earth, bigger than our galaxy, a massive earth that has one land mass and an ocean. I know there'll be no more seas. The seas separate the land masses. But as long as God exists, the river of life will never stop flowing from him. That's how the crystal sea is made in heaven. On the bottom is not sand, it's gemstones. They flow out of the Father. They're a part of him. So if you should one day wake up and you have emeralds in your skin as a bracelet, That's the Father's image. Not even New Age can do that. <laughs> they, they, the devil tries to steal as much as he can. He lived there, remember? He knew how things worked, and a lot of the things he says are his were never his. Your life in eternity will be the most most splendorous, wondrous thing you've ever experienced. People move to heaven now for R&R. &R. Because they won't be there one day. They'll be moving to the Father's house right now. They have a place in the Father's house. Is that what the word says? Right now they go to prepare a place for you in the world called heaven, which is the Father's house. But on the new earth, it will be our house. And he's going to pack his bags and climb on the new Jerusalem and will come down to the new earth and he'll be with us forever. So even he is willing to move with his whole plan for eternity. And we will be timeless. We will have glorified bodies. We will be immortal. All of this is in the word. Mortality will take on immortality. When he said, know ye not that ye are gods, that's a little g, that's what he was talking about. One day we'll be immortal like them, we'll never die, never sin, we'll never lack, we'll be timeless. There'll be no time in heaven, there's no time in the new earth. And he'll create all these new things for us to go and put things on it for us to enjoy and have fun. Every planet will be different. And you won't need a spacesuit or a spaceship to go there. You'll be timeless. This is a beautiful future, isn't it? So this little bit of time that we are on this earth, but we will get to do supernatural. The Bible says there'll be a type and group of people, a generation, a type and group of people. Those are those manifested sons and daughters of God. It, it, it wasn't about Israel becoming a nation. I know a lot of people think that generation was the generation. They would still be here when Jesus came, but a lot of them have already died and moved to heaven. Yes. Haven't they? Yes. That was in 1948. Is that correct, yes. Rick? Got that one. <laughs> in 1948, a, a miracle happened in Israel. Do what? Oh, fix my, fix it. Is it falling off? Thank you for telling me, honey. <laughs> I, used to, I, I pin my scars down, these little scars, they'd be all the way on the floor. I'd walk around with one little piece up here and it's on the floor and dragging, and nobody ever told me. Nobody ever said, oh my, your scarf is falling off of you. <laughs> so my team have little signs usually they give, but you know, he just kind of lets it go sometimes. <laughs> So we have been chosen by God to be here, or you wouldn't be alive and sitting there. People go, maybe I wasn't chosen. Are you alive? Are you breathing? Were you born in this time? You were chosen. You were chosen, and you're representing all those who went before you. And you don't know who lived a thousand years ago. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't know, but somewhere in your generational line was someone who laid down their life for the gospel. 
And what he is doing is putting on the earth right now those who generational line somewhere laid down their life for the gospel. So don't say you didn't have anybody. You had somebody or you wouldn't be sitting here. We get to help complete their destiny. Because he gives a destiny or a purpose for a generational line. And even though they didn't get to complete it, they started it. They share in the same reward we get. That's why they're so excited that you're here right now. You are a member of the body of Christ. You are going to reap reward for you and them. And they watch you do it. They won't miss one time that you win someone to the Lord. They won't miss one time that you manifest for God in this earth. They will see all of it. Because we have a cloud of witnesses. Is that right? According to Hebrews 12, 1. We have a great cloud of witnesses watching our race. That means they get to see it. And they're excited. And they're all cheering. Heaven is cheering. They laugh every time Satan fails. And he can hear them all the way down into hell. And heaven roared the other day. They're going to roar on November 6th. Amen. So I've really enjoyed this time with y'all. I hope you were blessed by heaven. Amen. Amen. And so just remember, I told you all these things that I will be working. Um, God walked in the wall, through the wall of my hotel room a couple months ago. And he wrote on the wall, literally, what I'd be doing for the next 50 years. That's not the end of my assignment. But he wrote for, for 50 years, the platforms I would speak from. The very first one, he was switching. No, don't be concerned. I've been spending years, many years, revealing heaven. But I'm in my next phase, which is creating heaven. To put in the marketplace, a lot of people have heard me talk about this for a while. We literally are, this year, starting to put things in the marketplace that look like heaven, sound like heaven. You'll be eating off of it, wearing it, walking on it, listening to it. You'll have walls that move and say things. That's in heaven. And so we're doing that now. So he changed and switched my priority. Number one is the business world, the marketplace, the business world, being CEO and putting stuff in the marketplace that represents heaven that this people really, people in this world need that. Because right now Satan has put his mark on everything. You wear it, you have to stand, you look at it. It's in design, it's in interior design, architectural design. It's in clothing, it's in accessories, it's in home stuff, it's in everything. It's in all the schools, it's everywhere. So God is now putting heaven there. Amen? And you can have things that represent heaven. And so I have to do that or we won't be there. I'm not saying other people won't do it, but we will majorly be impacting this world. Amen? And number two, we'll still be revealing heaven and training the body of Christ. But number three will be the arts and entertainment world, which means Hollywood. So I will be seen many times with celebrities in Hollywood, directors, producers, and don't do what a lot of other Christians do. Oh my gosh, that person's over there talking to Hollywood. They're going to go down the hole. No, Hollywood's changing. Hollywood's changing what they're going to produce, what they're going to put out there, what they're going to market. And even places of entertainment never had before on the earth will be created for you to go and have good family fun. Amen. New hotel designs, it's, in, it's totally invaded with heaven. Uh, the, the stuff in the rooms, the stuff in the walls, the stuff that's played there, the things that you can do while you're there, it's all changing. Whole amusement parks uh, will be lined up with what heaven is doing in the earth right now. Video games will be shown that young people can be part of uh, working with heaven's army, destroying the darkness, pushing back, you know, the evil. In these video games, and instead of being invaded by hell, they'll be invaded by heaven. All kinds of things. Whatever young people like, we're making it with heaven in it. And so we will have uh, movies in the movie theaters. 
that show a lot about heaven, of time, of the spirit realm, the spirit realm, the spirit realm. They want the spirit realm. Yes, they want the unseen realm. They are so hungry for the unseen realm. It's not a fake. It's not a fantasy. You know, they'll stop running after maybe so superheroes for a while, but definitely aliens will be put on the back burner. Although some of the hosts look like them. <laughs> so I, I just want to thank you for letting me come tomorrow. I have another powerful message to give to encourage and inspire you. It's going to be amazing. You're going to get some protocol from heaven on how to uh, work with the army of heaven and things about your life to be accountable so that you can work with them. Because tell you, heaven, I know they hear the prayers of sinners. People think they don't, but they do. He hears the prayers of sinners. He, could, he couldn't answer them. Right. Amen? Yeah. Heaven hears everybody's That's words. Right. Right. But the army is not going to listen to someone trying to command them when they're sinning, right. when they're shredding people. Yes, You're not going to do it. They will stand there and stare at you. <laughs> so if you want to be a part of using them as one of your spiritual weapons and sending them all over this world to pull down strongholds of darkness, expose the wicked people themselves, take them down, not kill them, <laughs> unless they have to. I will let you know this, that I do know, like for Kavanaugh, God is releasing whole, um, I'm trying to remember, what do you call like a troop being? A group of military, like battalions, yeah. He's sending whole battalions of the hosts that have flesh on them. And they were the ones that fought against the armies of Israel. They actually fought in the flesh and fought against the flesh. They are being released into this earth to keep the lives of those who say,